Hey guys, what is going on? It's Brycat23 here with X Trades. Today we're going to be going over another detailed ticker analysis. This time it's a bearish setup that I like with TAN or the Invesco Solar ETF. So one thing that I do like about this setup is even if you don't want to play TAN or you're a little more bullish on, on solar in the near term, when you see something bearish at an industry level, you can take a look within that industry and look at essentially stocks within the industry that just have a more bearish setup or, or stocks that have been underperforming relative to the industry. And you can look to play the setup that way as opposed to playing a bearish setup on Invesco Solar ETF. Uh, and, you know, the same applies for the market in general or other industries. So, again, this is my thoughts on TAN, the solar ETF, but you can, again, take a closer look within the industry and see if there's a setup, a similar setup that you like more that has confluence with this short-term bearish bias. So kind of going into it, I already talked about my bias a little bit, but just to dive into it more, really what we have here is, you know, a month, month and a half long bearish rising wedge that's been forming. So obviously I have those denoted here with this rising trend line resistance and this steeper ascending trend line support. So again, these are typically seen as bearish because even though we have a strong rising support, we're unable to keep up that momentum. The buyers are unable to keep up that momentum relative to the sellers, which is why they aren't able to make these essentially the same magnitude jumps off of this support. So seeing that the jumps of lesser magnitude off of support shows weakness relative to this steeply sloping support zone. So once you do break through that support zone, if it does happen, there is usually a pretty good sell-off where the buyers have really just been exhausted by this, by this uptrend um, and are totally worn out and the sellers finally enter uh, or people start to exit their longs at that point uh, and look for other trades. But at any rate, definitely looks to be a rising wedge. On top of that, we have a nice, strong and healthy downtrend that led into it. So it's nice to see that and, and kind of have some confidence in the fact that this is going to go in the same direction that our previous trend was headed in. So we had a strong downtrend. And even though this is consolidating upwards, it has confluence with the direction we were trading before. So we went, it, went from a strong downtrend to this consolidation pattern, which is inherently bearish. So having the bearish expectation going forward, it's nice to see uh, the bearish trend heading into this consolidation pattern. So really like to see that. So I have a few other notes in terms of kind of price estimates and expected moves, but also some key levels that I think we should watch out for. Um, and we can talk about the time frame a little bit as well. I do think that there's a good chance that we break out of this uh, out of this wedge before July, honestly, just because again, unless we get above this like 83 four level, uh, it's going to be getting really tight with this trend line support. So I think that there's a good chance that if we stay below 83 four, that we're going to end up breaking down and selling off below this trend line support. So that's kind of really what I'm expecting. So it's, it's on a pretty heavy watch for me, uh, kind of heading into the next week uh, and up to two weeks, essentially, as long as we stay below that 83.4 price level. So really what we have here, again, we, we base these price targets off of essentially the height of the trend based on the first touch of resistance and the first touch of support. Uh, which I have mapped around $79 and $69 respectively. So that puts our height of this trend right around eight or right around $10. And so that in line with our percentage meeting price target, which for these uh, rising wedges is usually like 60 to 65%, really puts us at a potential move of around six to six and a half dollars. And and again, this is the expected move to the downside if we do get a breakout 
to the downside. So it's, you know, it, it all depends on if we're able to break trend line support. And if that happens, then there's a pretty high likelihood that we do make a nice move to the downside. And, and my expectation for that move, just based on data and historical price trends, would be about $6, which also has confluence with our previous touch of support. So our first kind of touch of support was down here, right around the $69 range. And then our next support bounce came right around 75. So this is actually where if we broke out, you know, a little bit later this week and, and fell out right around this 81, 82 price area, the $6 move that we imply would bring us right into this 75, 76 price area, which is an area where we would likely see some buyers start to enter if they haven't entered sooner. So this is definitely where I would start to kind of, uh, definitely be exiting a position if I did enter one. But ultimately, this is my like full price target based on the pattern and based on just our price target and the bounce that we saw within this trend. Uh, I like kind of targeting bounces within the trend um, and you know second and third bounces within the trend for these price targets as opposed to just kind of assuming that it's going to break through all of these levels without any sort of uh, any sort of resistance, which is uh, highly unlikely. So that's kind of why I like to tier my price targets based on areas where we have seen changes in price. And, and this 75 uh, price area is definitely one of them. So that's why I have that as my price target, again, based on that $6 per uh, potential move and assuming a breakout right around 81. So that again another situation that we're looking at is we could see a little bit of a little bit of a bounce or, or a little bit of choppiness if we do get a breakout in this 79 price level so the reason being here is this was an area that we gapped down to so this is definitely an area where you know it previously acted as a resistance area uh, and in the interim it could absolutely act as a support and currently it has confluence with a 20 day simple moving average, which is this kind of orangish yellow line. And you can clearly see, even though it's not a huge amount of data we're looking at, but you can clearly see that this area is sensitive to price. So when we're trading above that, it usually will act as a support uh, when prices are trending. So you can see we're trading above it uh, and it kind of acted as a support here before we made another move higher. And then even when prices retrace downwards uh, along, along this trend line support, um, this dynamic moving average definitely helped to bolster prices up and, and hold this trend essentially. So I think that this 79 price level will kind of be another tricky area to break where we could see a small short-term bounce um, or a little bit of consolidation before continuing downwards Again, because this is clearly an area where prices have been sensitive, we rejected previously here, we gapped down here, um, and it has confluence with a dynamic moving average, which prices have definitely been sensitive to in recent history. So 79 is definitely a key area to watch as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and then beyond that, we should be able to make some pretty swift moves towards that 75, 76 price level. Um, and then in, in terms of actually watching this breakout happen, uh, we have a horizontal support that we need to break uh, and that should break pretty much as soon as we break out of this trend. And once that support level is gone, we should definitely see some good selling pressure. And that's that this 81.6, 81.5 price level that I have labeled here as hor horizontal support. So we obviously... Uh, had this area as an area of resistance kind of within trend. Then once we broke out on pretty heavy buying volume, uh, prices actually retraced um, and consolidated off of this zone. So you can clearly see that uh, it was previously acting as a support. Uh, then in the near term, it was quickly acting as a resistance. And now uh, since we got above it with some high volume, it's acting as a support zone again. So once we do kind of retest this trend line support and the horizontal support, if we break out of, again, either one of these, there's going to be heavy selling pressure 
and I expect both of them to fall at the same time. So this is that first area where I would definitely look for a potential trade once we get below this 8170 price level. Um, and then again, I would expect some nice selling pressure um, and a pretty quick run towards that 79 price level. And from there again, we could potentially see a bounce um, and some consolidation. So again, that's an area that you might have to watch out for, but then below that 79 price level, I really would like to target um, that kind of 75, 75, five price level based on, again, the height of this trend uh, that we're really dealing with. So I think overall, it's a really nice setup. It's a really healthy looking setup. And I think that, again, you can take this and you can look for a potential trade in this, or you could take what you know here for this, for this uh, Invesco Solar ETF and go and apply it to other trades in the industry and say, I know that there's weakness in solar. Where can I apply that where I like this setup a little more or where there's a stronger risk to reward trade off? So that's kind of my spiel on TAN. Again, really healthy looking setup in my opinion. I'm going to keep a bearish bias as long as it's within this trend and it's below this 83.4 price level. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions at all, please let me know and just feel free to leave a comment down below. So thank you guys so much for joining and I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.